in the dictionary, you will find black letters on white paper with phrases such as capacity to lead, the act or instance of leading, and to some, this is an acceptable definition. To others, this is the absolute bare minimum. Some of these words might actually be more of an insult than a definition. To me, those words are something that means more to me than anything else that you can do in this world. And it's not the words so much that come to mind as it is a name. And that name is Gunnar Sarn Rodriguez Chavez. At this time, out of respect, if you guys could stand while I read this citation, please. Try not mess up the camera. For extraordinary heroism and actions against the enemy as a team leader, embedded training team 28, regional core advisory command 37, in support of Operation Enduring Freedom, tasked as a security element at the rally point, Staff Sergeant Rodriguez Chavez's team, along with two platoons of Afghani National Army and Afghani Border Police, were ambushed by 40 to 60 insurgents from a fortified and concealed position near a village in the Kandahar province in Afghanistan. In order to reestablish contact with the remainder of his team and to assist in the recovery of the wounded Marines and Afghanis, Staff Sergeant Rodriguez Chavez drove his Humvee forward into the trackless valley where the enemy had laid a well-prepared ambush. Annoying the withering enemy fire, evacuated the wounded and to the casualty collection point. Without the benefit of any supporting arms, and with the complete disregard of his own personal safety, he and his gunner moved along the kill zone four times under fire to find the Marine advisors cut off from the rest of the unit. After locating the Marines who had been cut off and was marked by smoke grenades, Staff Sergeant Rodriguez Chavez moved across country into the deepest point of the kill zone in order to recover the bodies of his four comrades. Without hesitation, he positioned his Humvee between the enemy and the fallen Marines, shielding his gunner from intense enemy fire so that he could recover the team safely. Still under fire, he withdrew from the enemy contact, protecting an unarmed pickup with his Humvee. By his decisive actions, bold initiative, and selfless dedication to duty, Staff Sergeant Rodriguez Chavez reflected great credit upon himself and uphold the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and the United Naval Services. Please take your seats. Because of Gunner Son Rodriguez and his Gunner Dakota Meyer in actions on that day in the citation I just read, the result was Gunner Son Rodriguez receiving the Navy Cross, the second highest military award, and Dakota Meyer receiving the Medal of Honor, the nation's highest military award. They saved 13 Americans and 23 Afghani troops because of their actions on that day. As a Marine that has served in combat, I can tell you from personal experience, there is no greater comfort that is taken with the phrase, no Marine left behind. And that is whether if you are alive or dead. I heard this story firsthand from Gunnar Sergeant Rodriguez in 2010 in the Seattle International Airport. My wife and I were getting ready to execute orders to Okinawa, Japan. As we were making our way through the airport, I heard a familiar voice calling my first name. See, the Marine Corps can be a small place sometimes, and this is an example of that. Gunnar Star Rodriguez was coming back to Okinawa from his combat leave, and this was the first time that I've seen him since 2008, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. I remember telling him firsthand, or I remember him telling me the firsthand account of what happened and me thinking to myself, only by God's graces are you still here with us today. Later on in 2011, the story broke about Gunnar Sark and Dakota Meyer. I recall talking to some of my brothers that served back in Hawaii from 2002 to 2005. The familiar phrase and the common phrase was, I'm not surprised at all that Gunnar Sark Rodriguez did that on that day. See, a small group of us had the privilege to be raised by Sergeant Rodriguez Chavez in the Marine Corps. Then, Sergeant Rodriguez ruled with an iron fist. He had the mentality of a crazed pit bull. He would never back down, and he would never show weakness. No matter what the mission was that came down the pipes, he would lock onto it and carry it out with the highest standard. Because of his actions is why we respected his words. See, a lot of leaders like to use words, and when it comes time to back up their actions, they fall short of the mark time and time again. 
And <clears throat> not, not Gunnar Sar Rodriguez. He set the standard so high for Sergeant Marines that after five years of putting everything I had into the rank, I still couldn't achieve his standard. He had the mindset of an older brother when it came to his Marines. Gunny would push us harder than anybody else in the chain of command. He wouldn't back down. And if we jacked something up, trust me, we were getting ripped. At first, it was in English. And if we messed something up real bad, we'd get it in Spanish. Although I had no idea what he was saying when the Spanish came out, I just knew I better fix myself because shit just got real. Now, if anyone, no matter the rank, would try to mess with his boys, he would unleash a greater fury. We took comfort in that, knowing that he had our backs no matter the cost to him. In my 13 years in the Marine Corps, I never came across a greater leader than him. Our paths crossed again at the schoolhouse. This was after he received the Navy Cross. And at this point, he was somewhat of a folk hero in the Marine Corps and the motor transport community. But one of Gunny Rod's best traits is how humble he is. You would never know how highly decorated he is until you've seen him in his dress uniform. He would never blow his own horn or beat on his own chest because he knows that the, one of the golden rules in the Marine Corps is what have you done for me lately. He doesn't coast on past achievements, although he could if he wanted to. No, Gunny takes a different road, a road not traveled by many from his background. Gunnar Sergeant Rodriguez still has the great, same great leadership traits as he did as a sergeant. Hardworking, lead by example, always on point, never backing down, and will fight for his Marines no matter the cost to him. I can honestly say that there is no one in this world that I respect more than that man. If he walked into this room right now and told me to run through that wall, I would put my head down and take off in a sprint, and all you would hear is, aye aye, Gunnar Sergeant. I'm going to leave you with two quotes. First comes from the writing titled, I Want to Be Dead with, Dead with My Friends by Grifter. My other fear is that the world will bury what we have done. The history books will refer to our endeavors the way I learned about Vietnam. The story that was told by my teachers was widely different than the stories my father shared. His wasn't stories of mistakes. His was stories of brotherhood and sacrifice. Thus is the divide of my generation. My brothers and I tell stories with passion and pride, and my non-serving peers think, what a waste of life. It might have been a waste, time will tell, but there was no other way that I would rather waste. I've wasted my life seeing the very best generation of men stand up and do what was asked of them. i wasted my life in third world shitholes knowing that my brothers cared more about me than a girl back home. I wasted my life watching guys risk and give their lives for one another. And I would not ask to waste my life in any other way. The last quote, I can't tell you where it originated from, but just know that it's not my own words. That time is a brief interruption in eternity. But what you do in your time is how you spend your eternity. And I think it's safe to say that Congressman Rodriguez Chavez is taking advantage of his time. Thank you.